ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد all praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions and his followers until the Day of Judgment. I bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, his last and final messenger. Not far away from the Medina of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, there is a place known as Masakinu Bani Awf an area for Bani Awf, a tribe, Bani Awf, lives there. And one of their leaders, وَكَانَ مِنْ سَادَاتِهِمْ وَكَانَ يَأُمُّهُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ عِتْبَانُ بْنِ مَالِكِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهِ Itban ibn Malik, he is the imam for their congregations, and he is one of the leader of Bani Salim, or Bani Awf, from Salim Bani Awf. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the record, before he came to Medina, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually stopped there and prayed his first Jumu'ah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam while he is entering Medina. In any way, this is a place known to be a place for Al-Khazraj. So, uh, Bani Awf used to pray their daily prayer there. They have a musalla, they pray there. And in Jumu'ah, they come and they join the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in the masjid. Can you sallum fi hadha al-musalla salawatin? Fa'idha ja'atul Jumu'ah, nazalu wa sallaw ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Lakin Itban da'ufa basaruh, wa ankara min nafsih, wa khaf annahu idha ja'a al-sayl wa qata'a al-sayl anhu al-masjid, khaf yaqta'a al-sayl hatta la yata'athar. Sometimes it is a valley, so the rain comes in the valley runs with water. So Itban said, my eyesight became weak and I can't see properly. So I, it will be too risky for me to cross the valley to go pray. It looks like he tried a couple of times, he put himself in danger. So he decided to go to the Prophet Sallallahu and to tell him if it's okay if he pray at home and not to cross the valley to pray where the musalla with the congregation is. أراد أن يصلي في البيت رضي الله عنه وأرضاه ولا يأم الناس إذا جاء السيل وجاء وسال الوادي فحضر مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الجمعة كما أنتم اليوم في الجمعة. He came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم الجمعة prayer like you now and after صلاة he came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said إني أنكرت بصري وإن الوادي الذي بيني وبين قومي يسيل إذا جاءت الأمطار. فيشق علي اجتيازه فوددت أنك تأتي فتصلي في مكان في بيتي أتخذه مصلى He came to the Prophet and said Ya Rasulullah as I told you I can't see properly and I'm worried if I cross the valley while it's raining and uh, flooded it will not be safe so I decided I want to pray at my home but before I pray at somewhere in my house make it as a musalla, small musalla for me I want you to come to pray in this spot first and I will start praying in the same spot seeking the blessings of the Prophet Sallallahu being there it's not required but it's something will make him feel happy, special you know this is a place where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi prays so I will pray so at least I don't feel that very bad that I'm missing the congregation because I'm praying in the same spot where the Prophet Sallallahu prayed and a kind of also an approval that the Nabi Sallallahu allowed him to pray at home in such case, in such case so يعني أراد من هذا يعني نوع من المواساة له فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أتعجب من سرعة استجابة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أفعل إن شاء الله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said I will do إن شاء الله but his إن شاء الله is not like ours you know you know when you wanna يعني brush someone away tell him إن شاء الله you know will you do this إن شاء الله you know and it take maybe you know I remember one of the brothers called me إن شاء الله شيخ إن شاء الله I said, why? I was surprised. He said, Sheikh, I called you Sheikh, inshallah. I said, why? He said, Sheikh, I've been asking you to find a wife for me for the last 40 years. And every time I see you, you tell me, inshallah. I said, yeah, I don't have uh, brides in my pocket. I'll distribute them. 
But inshallah, if I find one, I'll let you know. Anyway, so, uh, but in any case, uh, in Nabi Sallallahu when he said, inshallah, I will do. Guess what? يَقُولْ عِتْبَانْ فَإِذَا بِضُحَ السَّبْتِ أَنَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَبُو بَكْرُ وَعُمَرْ عِنْدَ بَيْتِ يَطْرُقَانِ الْبَابِ In the morning, the daytime, before Dhuhr time, Saturday, in Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم and Abu Bakr and Umar coming to visit the Uthman. Less than 24 hours. That's an incredible response. From a leader who's so occupied صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. For just a random request, it's not an urgent, it's not like something mandatory in Islam or anything like that. So the first thing the Prophet ﷺ did when he came to the house of Itban, he said, Aina turi dunya in usalli? Where do you want me to pray? Before even we sit down, Fakala Itban Huna. He said, in this place. Then in Nabi Sallam stood up to lead the prayer. And Itban called his wife, his family, and Abu Bakr and Umar, and all line up behind the Prophet ﷺ. And in Nabi Sallam prayed two rak'ah in his house before he sat and started talking to him. I just imagine how happy he is, how proud he is, this man was at that point. Then in Nabi Wasallam sat with him. على خزير أو خزيرة. I told the process. The process said, okay, let's go. نمشي. قال لا لازم تجلس. قال يعني أصر علي حبسه على خزير خزيرة. What's خزيرة? خزيرة it is a, 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 like a soup with a little pieces of meat, just a little tiny pieces of tiny pieces of meat. That's a. I said that's the only thing I have. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay, we will sit and eat from your soup. Idam fihi qadilun juddam min allah. Tasama an nas. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi manazil ibani awf. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inda itban. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hina indana. Fabada an nas yitajama'oon. When they heard that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at his house, everybody in the neighborhood starts saying, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by the way, at itban. So they start coming. And they gather, and they gather, radiyallahu anhum. Until the sitting, or the place was filled with people. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with them asking about them and what's the happening with them. حَتَّى كَثُرَ الرِّجَالِ فَقَالَ رَجُلْ فِي الْمَجْلِسِ أَيْنَ مَالِكُ بْنِ الدَّخْشَنِ One of them said, what about Malik ibn al-Dakhshan? Where is he? He is very well known in that area or that tribe. مَالِ لَا أَرَاهِ I don't see him. He is an honorable, recognized person. قَالَ لَا أَرَاهِ فَقَالَ رَجُلْ ذلك منافق لا يحب الله ورسوله. A man said, "Oh, Malik ibn Dakh, don't worry about him. He is a hypocrite. He doesn't love Allah or His Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم. That's why he didn't come to care. He didn't care to come." وإذ بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم مباشرة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم immediately did not let anyone else to speak. Did not let the chance pass. Did not let the word goes by. ولا لحظة وإذ بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ألا تراه قال لا إله إلا الله يبتغي بذلك وجه الله فإن الله حرم على النار من قال لا إله إلا الله يبتغي بذلك وجه الله. Then the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him with a firm voice, didn't he say لا إله إلا الله? And said it sincerely, and Allah have forbid hellfire to touch someone who said La ilaha illallah sincerely. The man did not back off, want to justify his judgment. أراد هذا أن يعني يبرر لماذا قال هذا الكلام أو يسوغ هذا الكلام. فقال أما نحن فوالله لا نرى وده ولا حديثه إلا إلى المنافقين. وَلَا نَرَى وَجْهَهُ وَلَا نَصِيحَتَهُ إِلَّا لَهُمْ He said, for us, we always see him hanging out with the hypocrites. Known well hypocrites. We see him always hanging out with them, talking to them, have a relationship with them. He never bycut them. He, he is like, you know, socialized with them. And he, gave, he talked to them. That's why what I said what I said. 
وإذ بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يجيب جواب في غاية العجب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respond was an amazing to me النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم repeated the same exact statement قال فإن الله حرم على النار من قال لا إله إلا الله النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said Allah forbid the hellfire to touch someone sincerely said لا إله إلا الله and he said that end of the discussion you can't say that about him he protected his honor صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم خفر دينه وحمى مكانته صلى الله عليه وسلم وصان عرضه لأن لا إله إلا الله تفعل ذلك بكل مسلم He protected this man honor just because he believed in la ilaha illallah. Because he stated it and he lived by it. Itban lived 50 years after this incident. يذكر هذه الحادثة ويحكيها للناس ويقصها عليهم كما روى محمود بن الربيع قال حدثت بها في زمان معاوية أبا الدرداء وحدث بها حدثني بها مرة أخرى عتبان all the way to the time of Muawiyah 50 years later and عتبان still mentioning the story رضي الله عنه وأرضاه and the place where the Prophet ﷺ by the way prayed at his في فناء بيته in the backyard of his house or in the area of his house بقي مصلى يتعرفه الناس people recognize that place of salah يعني أنت أنت well exist until maybe 1992-1993 something like that and it was moved in that expansion that happened in Medina at that time. There is so many lessons from this story that I want to share with you. أولها لا تجعلوا بيوتكم قبورا. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صلوا في بيوتكم يعني صلاة النافلة. صلاة النافلة وحينما قال هذا صلى الله عليه وسلم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said pray at home don't make your home like graveyard we don't pray at the graveyard and النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم meant to pray at home the volunteer prayers not the obligatory prayers but from this اتبان رضي الله عنه he want to have a مصلى in his house and that's something that علماء said it is something a good recommended thing to do if you have a space in your home to designate an area became a مصلى and one of the important things of this, for the family member to see that, for your children to grow up and understand that this is a musalla, this is a place we pray together. In case my home far away from the masjid, or I miss the salah, not everybody pray at his room. No, you gather everybody and you pray. This is our salah area. Even if it's not a room, it's a part of the house. Maybe, you know, for God's sake, we have a game room. Can't we have a prayer room? You know, in our homes. So we dis designate an area where, you know what, we sit, maybe we read Quran, maybe we make adhkar, maybe we make dua, maybe we, it became a place known that it is a place where we honor the salah as a family. And that's something very interesting to, to have at home, especially for the young one to see that, especially for the girls to see that as well and to witness that as well. Even when they pray their sunnah salah, that's where you go pray. And it became clean, taking well, you take good care of it. And you know what, to beautify it. I know someone's home, I've been to his house, and it's amazing, the area for salah that he has, it's not a big, it's in his actually, you know, in what you call game room or the family gather room. But he has it, subhanAllah, where it's perfume, where it is, he has this, this machine that's spread like a good smell all the time. And he said, I treat this like the way I treat the master. I always make sure it's clean and beautiful. So that's something we learn. Another thing, there is this interest in people. And I think it is a natural thing. It's not like natural, but it's a common thing. People like to classify people. People like to put people in boxes. There is an interest always sometimes in people is to classify people. What you are, what you belong to, what box. And I try to box people in every, and I made in my mind, in my head, so many boxes and start fitting people on these boxes. I think that's just wrong. Being common thing, it's not a normal thing. That's not correct way of dealing with people. And so many times people became unfair and unjust and accusing people falsely by doing that. You know, it is, it is a problem has to be controlled. 
You know, not because you find a talk or a word or an incident or something somebody did and you immediately you said, oh, you belong to this group. Oh, you are like those people. Oh, you are. That's, that's just unfair, haram and not allowed. People have many different perspectives. Not because they agree with you in one point, it means I'm exactly like you. You know, when I, let's say, for example, I agree with, you know, a group, let's say, Qadiani groups, which is somebody like completely disagree with Muslim and many in principle. Maybe I agree with something that they say. You know what? One of the things that the Qadiani groups have in America, for example, a wonderful program about blood donations. And I praise that. It means that I'm, I'm being put in that box. I'm with that group. Just because I praise that or I like that. So that's, that's become a problem. Not because you approve something or you said something somebody said belong to a certain group or a certain uh, uh, ideologies it, or certain political views. It means you immediately belong to that group. That's just wrong. That's evil intention. That's somebody just looking for, you know, harming others. Another lesson that we learn from this. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, not because he talked to the munafiqeen, he one of them. Not because he have some nasiha to some of them or a deal with them, it means one of them. That's not how it works. Another lesson that we learn, it is so important to protect your brothers and sisters' honor when it is violated in their absence. Or even in their presence. Both, but it's more important in their absence. That's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not let it go. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam immediately protected him. And Nabi Sallallahu does not have the detailed information about this relationship between him and the Munafi. He didn't say, okay, tell me about it, you know, and give me more information about it. Ma'an Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ishi sawi ma'a munafiqeen, wa ishi tkallam, wa atni ma'lumat akthar. La, la, indu asal thabit, hadha rajul mu'min muahid, mu'min billah. La yajus lik tattahimu. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly protected him. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من رد عن عرض أخيه رد الله عنه وعن وجهه النار يوم القيامة ومن نصر أخاه بظهر الغيب نصره الله في الدنيا والآخرة وما من امرئ يخذل مسلما في موض ينتقص فيه من عرضه وينتهك فيه من حرمته إلا خذله الله في موض يجب فيه نصرته يحب فيه نصرته وما من امرئ ينصر مسلما في موطن ينتقص فيه من عرضه وينتهك فيه من حرمته إلا نصره الله في موطن يحب فيه نصرته رواه أبو داود والأحاديث السابقة رواها البيهقي والترمذي وغيرهم That النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم said in these three أحاديث it says that you when you protect your brothers and sisters honor in their absence the hadith of Tirmizi said Allah protect your face from the hellfire and the hadith of Al-Bayhaqi said, Allah will not protect when you give victory and you protect and you support. Allah support you in the dunya and in the akhirah. And in hadith Jabir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will give you support in a time when you need support the most. And if you forsake them, if you fail to protect them, if you fail to say the right thing at that moment, Allah will fail you in a time when you need His support the most. Many people say, Shaykh, I don't like this and that, but somebody said this and that, you know, about so-and-so person. You know, the first question I ask people when they tell me that, what did you do? Oh, I just want to tell you. Why did you tell me? Why didn't you speak up? If I see somebody post in a, in a, in a YouTube or anywhere or something wrong, and I know that's absolutely not correct. I know this, that's not right. Why? You know, when you look at social media and you look at the people, just let it go. No. I stand and say, that's not correct. That's not how it's handled. You just don't walk away. And if we have that attitude, no, you can't say this about my brothers. You cannot say that about my sisters. And, and that became a, a, a behavior that is needed in the society and in the community. You know what's interesting? العجيب أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما دافع عن مالك بن الدخشن ذكر شيئا يستوي فيه مالك وجميع الصحابة. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned something about مالك بن الدخشن that him and all the companions share, which is لا إله إلا الله. 
He did not mention something to make Malik ibn Dakhshan, for example, no, 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 he's a very special person. Malik ibn Dakhshan, for you to know, for you to know, is one of the Sahaba who witnessed the Battle of Badr. And the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, People of Badr, Allah forgive all their sins. Not only that, Malik ibn Dakhshan is the one that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appointed him to destroy Masjid al dirar al-Munafiqeen. He's the one who destroyed the Masjid that built by the hypocrites, known as Masjid, the Masjid of the hypocrites. Could have easily, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he is not a hypocrite, he's the one who destroyed their Masjid. He's not a hypocrite, he's Badri. But if he said that, would it sound like as if something is special about him? But not. Protecting your Muslim brother's honor, nothing about being special. Nothing about being, you know, a special person. It's enough to make you special that you say, La ilaha illallah. It's enough to make you special that you're a mu'min muwahid. You deserve my support and my protection. It's a great lesson for us to learn. In the ta'zeem and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, li haqqi la ilaha illallah, ta'zeem li asl islam wa tawheed. Honoring that the la ilaha illallah, that the person saying it means you honor a tawheed. And you honor Islam and Iman in this person's heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who learn from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu ma samaytum astaghfirullah li ulikum. Alhamdulillahi wahdahu wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'dahu wa ba'dahu. One of the great lessons from this story, huwa raddu da'iman al-mutashabih ila al-muhkam. Whenever you hear something and you see something, that it is ambiguous, something that's question mark about someone. You only judge this person or that statement or this action by what you 100% sure known of. You don't ever, طَرِيقَةِ الزَّائِغِينَ الَّذِينَ قَالَ اللَّهَ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضْ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ ابْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِ Those who have disease in their heart, they're looking for the ambiguity. They're looking for the things that is question of mark and start judging people through that, judging statements through that, making rules through that. But some evidence are very clear. He leave it for something ambiguous from the evidence or an incident that is ambiguous, can be point of view, can be, you know, misunderstood, could be just a pure simple mistake. And he take that and he make that the default and start attacking and judging and people based on that. That's absolutely not acceptable and wrong. And that's something the Quran warned us from. Also, not everybody building a relationship with people that he or she disagree with. Have a relationship with people that you might not agree with. It means that this person is a betrayer. No, there's many ways of dealing with the people that you don't agree with and we disagree with. Not everybody has to be the watchdog. Not everybody has to be the one who scream at the street. Not everybody has to be, like in our community, I always say, we need those people who will go to sit on the table and talk and make, you know, and reach out and make, you know, a, 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 a building a relationship and building a bridge and communicate. And we need those people on the street who are attacking a scream. We need both. But what's important is those who inside the room talking and negotiating do not sell out the people outside in the street. And the people in the street do not say and claim that those people inside are betrayer. They complement one another. They get each other's back. They help one another. That's what is needed. There's multiple approach always to any problem. And to any multiple solutions for any, you know, issues that you need to solve. There's a lot to be said. That cancel culture, that it became common and adopted to some people today. It is just not an Islamic culture. Simple as that. I love how Nabi is so near to his friends. Easy to be approached, easy to be asked is to be talked to. Even the one who said he's a hypocrite. He was not scared to tell the Prophet ﷺ that. He knows how Malik ibn Dakhshan is to the Prophet ﷺ. But he said what he feels. That level of transparency is needed. And Nabi ﷺ was not mad at him that he said what he said. But he was correcting him. And that's important. 
is to accommodate each other and to listen to each other and to talk to each other instead of talking at each other or about each other. I love how generous the Sahaba used to be and how we used to be very generous. We, al jud min al mawjud, we give what we have. You know, he has just this little soup and he offered. You didn't need to make a feast. And because people became so exaggerating in what I have to provide, what I have to give, we don't invite each other anymore. We don't talk with each other. We don't get to each other's house anymore because I feel the burden of it. You know what I like about Malik, what I like about Itban? The Itban 50 years is still mentioning the Khazira. It's still mentioning that little soup that he gave the Prophet He didn't want to shame of it. I'm, I'm not shame of that. You know, you come to my house and you know, all what I can offer you, maybe, you know, I'll make you a cold turkey sandwich. That's all I got. That's fine. You know, come and have some coffee. My brothers and sisters, the Sirat al Nabi Sallallahu is an excellent opportunity to learn and to grow. So I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala at the end of us to always give us basira, to give us wisdom, and to give us the ability to learn from His life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واكرم نزلنا اللهم اغفر لنا والإخوان الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غل للذين آمنوا اللهم إني نسلك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إني أسألك يا حي يا قيوم أن تعجل بفرج ونصر إخواننا في غزة وأن تجعل دائرة السوء على من ظلمهم وعلى من خذلهم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم احفظ دماءهم وأعراضهم اللهم إني نسلك يا حي يا قيوم يا أرحم الراحمين أن ترحم ضعفهم وأن تجبر كسرهم وأن تفرج عن أسراهم اللهم اللهم إنا نسألك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام أن تفرح قلوب المؤمنين بنصر وحفظ لهؤلاء المستضعفين المساكين اللهم هم وغيرهم من المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان والمظلومين في كل مكان وادرأ نار الحرب والفتنة بين المسلمين واللي عليهم خيارهم وأصلح من وليته أمرهم وأبعد عنهم شرارهم واللي علينا خيارنا وأبعد عنا شرارنا ولا تجعلنا فتنة للقوم الظالمين اللهم أنزل رحمتك وعافيتك ومحبتك ورضاك على هذا المسجد وأهله وجاليتنا يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وقوم الصلاة يرحمكم الله